I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Friday April the 12th brought to you in part by Toramox by Norbrook. Toramox treats infections and infestations due to internal and external parasites. Basically it's a generic cydectin. For more information go to norbrook.com. The basis narrows I uh, talked on the last uh, visit or two about how wide the basis was getting with the board tanking here earlier this week and we've had a couple of up days and Thursday was one of them and and we saw our markets come down, our cash markets come down so the basis has narrowed. Uh, your fat basis is about two dollars in the south and four dollars in the north now. On feeder cattle uh, your basis is running about five dollars to your real-time index which is always up to date and current and about a little over four dollars to your CME cash feeder cattle index but uh, there's still a gap in there and, and we're deep into the to the spot month into April here but uh, you know the board just doesn't act right uh, even though we're we're in really good uh, shape as far as fundamentals go the board just doesn't act right and and uh, I've told you guys before uh, the folks that really trade the board don't care anything about the fundamentals uh, on a day-to-day -day basis now they might over time but on a day-to-day -day basis they're just looking at squiggly lines and technicals uh, on your charts and so uh, they're, they're not too worried about this thing but your April feeder cattle will come together with your CME cash feeder cattle index at the end of the month. Uh, cash settled, they will absolutely come together and uh, we're yet to see what's going to happen on your on your live cattle. Uh, if we don't get this thing straightened up here uh, we're liable to lose another dollar or two uh, next week and then we're going to be right there flush but uh, it just uh, it, you know we're, we're in a little correction period right here now most of it due to the black swan, the bird flu outbreak and we're kind of getting that in the rearview mirror a little bit. We haven't heard a lot of new news uh, the last couple of days about that and now that we're starting to see it show up in city parks and New York City and and uh, we're starting to hear about it being in other animals over time and different things like that, maybe it's not as big a deal as what we thought. But the main thing is the cattle are recovering from it. So, uh, you know, if, if the cattle, uh, you know, get off feed a little bit, uh, uh, you know, kind of kind of get lethargic and, and aren't doing too good, you get them in, you give them a shot, and they get better within a few days. Cattle people are used to that. Now, dairy people, maybe not so much on a, on a, a fully mature dairy cow there. So it, it's shaking them up a little bit. But we've yet to find it in a beef bovine animal and we don't know for sure if if cows are, are giving it to, to each other uh, you know we've found a few uh, infections within certain herds around uh, but they may have all caught it from the birds and like I mentioned on our last visit uh, who knows if that dairy worker didn't catch it from the birds himself uh, but we think he probably caught it from drinking unpasteurized milk and I say it's he we don't know who it is but uh, uh, we're starting to get that a little bit behind us and that's a good thing. I uh, mentioned on our last visit that uh, it was reported that uh, King Ranch has bought half interest in cobalt feeders. Uh, they're the fourth largest cattle feeding uh, corporation there in the country and uh, a lot of people on Thursday you know wondering why King Ranch would want that you know maybe they're just diversifying their interests there but uh, you know it was kind of a shakeup. We also heard rumors on Thursday that were swirling all around the industry of additional consolidation of corporate feeders uh, and, and from what I've heard that that is false. Um, some of you may have heard the rumors and, and it would have been big if it had indeed been true and, and who knows it may come out to be true but uh, uh, consolidation of the few corporate feeders that we have would not be good uh, we, and there's a lot of auction markets that don't have a lot of, of yearling feeder cattle buyers sitting in the seats and if we did see consolidation uh, there would be one less and uh, you know we know that's the next trickle we don't have a lot of uh, negotiated trade in your fat cattle we don't have a lot of con uh, competition we still do on feeder cattle and we really do uh, on turnout cattle, grazing cattle, calves and stalkers and the like but uh, we don't want to seek uh, further consolidation of our corporate feeders 
uh, because we, we want that competition in the sales. And uh, so uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. And, and I'm not sure that the government would allow a big consolidation of major corporate feeders anyway, uh, because there's already a oligopoly in, in, the, uh, in the fat cattle uh, trade. And we don't want to see that uh, start to happen more in, in our feeder cattle trade. But uh, talk about uh, a big sale coming up here this weekend is Coffeeville Stockyard Spring Yearling Video Special. Uh, you guys are looking for some cattle. There's not a lot of cattle moving right now. You can bid on over 10,000 yearlings. They've got a few lots of, uh, of longtime weaned calves that are ready to turn out on grass, but it's mostly yearlings. Over 10,000 of them in big strings, guys. The delivery on them is going to be current from April 15th up to June the 1st. Uh, you, can, you can see a plethora of them on that video sale from Coffeeville Stockyards. It's going to be on Saturday, April the 13th at 6 p.m. Uh, you can view and bid that sale on DV Auction. If you want to show up on site, it's at the Oklahoma State University Student Union Building in room 465 in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Tylen Layton's doing a good job there. His video sales are first rate. They're as good as any video sale that you get on, guys. Uh, they're right there on dvauction.com. Call them, call Tylen, get a hold of them at Coffeeville early, get approved, get ready to bid on those strings of yearlings going to be coming up here on Saturday night. Talk about your board. April live cattle futures were up $1.17 at 180 and a quarter. June up $1.05 at 173.90. Your back months on live cattle were up 37 to 87 cents. April feeder cattle up 90 cents at 239.17. May was up $1.62 at 238.15. Your back months were all up from 85 cents to up 135. Look at your grains. May corn was down a penny at 427 and three fourths. May beans down three and a half at 150 or 1155 and three quarters. Kansas City hard red winter wheat was up a quarter cent a bushel at 583 and a half. Fat cattle trade was lower and it was established on Thursday here. Uh, and you know they weren't exactly puking them. Uh, we had a few weak sisters give up early in the week that did not establish the market, but after the board was down hard on Wednesday, uh, that appeared to be what the market was, and, and of course guys had a little basis there to jump at, so they went ahead and started selling them. But in Iowa on Thursday, they sold 10,000 head, 13,200 for the week. Live sales in Iowa on Thursday were 184 to 185 and a half. That's two to three bucks lower. Dress sales at 293, which is four dollars lower than last week. Nebraska sold 3,000 up to 2 o'clock on Thursday. About 3,500 head is all for the week. Live sales from 184 to 185. And dress sales mostly 293, but some better ones to regionals up to 295. In the Southern Plains, they established a market $2 lower. Kansas sold 8,700 head, 9,100 for the week. Uh, the market was mostly 182. Did have some cattle in Kansas up in the northern part, uh, top quality cattle up to 185, but the market's mostly 182 live. Did have a few dressed cattle in Kansas at 288. That's off the market. Texas sold about 1,000 is all up through 2 o'clock on Thursday. And uh, they likely sold more. They're usually selling five, six, seven thousand. 7,000. They likely sold the rest of them late on Thursday, but the market in Texas on Thursday is 182. Like I said, two bucks lower. Box beef cutout values were kind of mixed, uh, but they're below the $300 threshold there that we've been eyeballing. Choice cuts are up 14 cents at 298.37. Selects down 87 cents at 295.15, but pretty still a pretty narrow spread between the choice and select. Slaughter's running at a decent pace. Uh, we're still probably going to be under 600,000 for the week, but. 482,000 through the first four days of the week. That's 8,000 more than last week and just 4,000 less than the same week a year ago. Your actual slaughter information come in. It's always two weeks late there, but 
Your average dress steer carcass weight come in at 923 pounds. That's one pound lighter than the previous report and, and uh, kind of saving us there uh, because these carcass weights have been going up here of late and this is not the seasonal time for them to be going up. We normally don't see them get heavier until later in the spring getting closer to the summer but uh, maybe they've uh, kind of peaked out here for what should be uh, a time when the weights are getting lighter but whenever they're not slaughtering many cattle they're still on feed and the longer they're on feed the more weight they're going to gain bigger the carcasses are going to be. Talk about what else is going on. Fairpiece is that revolutionary product that's scientifically proven. We talk about them here. Uh, they're a partner with us on a lot of things including the Punchy Pick of the Month contest here at DV Auction but uh, we offer a lot of testimonial videos and, and got a lot of trials on there. Go on to fairpiece.com and you can see more of the trials and the results of them. Uh, the, the favorite trial that I have that I've talked about on here before is where Dr. Rodrigo ordered uh, a couple of loads of uh, Mississippi sale barn calves. They would be some of the hardest to get straightened out, guys. Uh, he had those calves shipped uh, down to close to where he makes fair piece there at College Station, Texas. They unloaded them, ran them through the chute. Uh, they treated uh, half of them with fair piece. Uh, the control group they did not give anything to, but they gave all the other shots and, and the normal protocol for backgrounding there. Uh, then they put them through extra stress. They loaded the calves back up, hauled them up to Amarillo, turned around and hauled them back down to College Station. And by the time they went through the, the backgrounding process, uh, the co control group that did not receive fair piece had over a 17 percent death loss the ones that did receive fair piece on arrival had less than a three percent death loss guys you can't afford not to try it it's three bucks or less a dose guys but uh, talk about your feeder cattle market your real-time index on DV auction late in the day on Thursday sitting at 244.31 that was down just six cents so not too bad there and that's through your Thursday sales and we had some pretty impressive Thursday sales all around. Your latest CME cash feeder cattle index was down nearly two bucks at 243.65. Coming to you right here from the Spinks Ranch Hunting House, uh, Jericho Springs, Missouri. Uh, earlier I gave a presentation on Thursday evening uh, to some students, some ag students at Crowder College there, and, and a good group of young people. They were very attentive and paying attention, which uh, was unlike me at their age probably, but. Uh, on Saturday, going to be uh, going to the uh, to uh, Travis Merrick's farm, uh, Glionda Angus Ranch. There, he's having a field day. That's going to be about 10 miles south of uh, Lockwood, Missouri, and uh, the, he's going to have a really good deal there. He's going to have food. He's going to have some speakers there. He's got a light offering of uh, of uh, purebred Angus bulls there that he's going to have for sale on private treaty. Uh, that's going to be running from 11 o'clock in the morning till 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. If you're in southwest Missouri, be sure to come over to that. Should be a pretty good time, and I think the weather's going to be all right. Uh, more big sales coming up. A big, big sale that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. The Proud to be American sale, and that is a, a premium replacement sale, guys. It's going to be in Burbank, Oklahoma. That's in northwest or northeastern Oklahoma, excuse me there. But it's going to be on DV auction. It's going to be May the 3rd. They've got 900 commercial replacement heifers. And they've got some of the most prestigious uh, uh, genetics that, that you can get. They got them from the King Ranch, Express Ranches, Mush Rush Ranches, uh, Calvo Farms there. Uh, it's, uh, they've got 90 fall bred heifers with Hinkson genetics in them. 45 uh, be bred heifers, Brayford, Brayford Cross there coming from the Wilder Farms and they're going to be uh, part bred to Wagyu Bulls, 75 open bred uh, uh, Brayford heifers there and then several smaller groups of, uh, of pairs there and they'll be top quality also guys. This sale's put together and we've had several of them here on DV Auction. Shane Steerwalt there has got a good reputation, he puts these sales together along with one of my favorite auctioneers uh, in the purebred and replacement uh, sales there, Ron Cunningham. And so get on to DV Auction on May the 3rd. 
or you can get on there right now and you can find out a lot more information about it there dvauction.com proud to be American sale let's talk about your feeder cattle market your uh, big sales on Thursday farmers and ranchers livestock in Salina Kansas about 3200 head for them uh, and it was a mixed bag on the trend and of course this is Kansas uh, federal state market reporting so you can take it with a grain of salt but they are getting a little bit better it's not from training it's just from experience but over 850 pound uh, feeders were, were kind of uneven uh, the 7 to 850 pound feeders were sharply lower called 8 to 10 lower there by market news and lighter weight under 600 pounders from 10 to 15 bucks lower so you know they've been kind of flying high and, and, and everybody kind of levels out uh, eventually winter livestock in Pratt Kansas about 2400 for them uh, the heavy feeders there were steady to five bucks higher uh, middleweight uh, steers were six bucks lower lightweight cattle uh, they're still looking for stockers down there two to three bucks higher but uh, your national beef wire stick out sale of the day was way up north in Dickinson North Dakota at Stockman's Livestock Exchange. They come through Cattle Market Central with over 5,200 head of feeders. I'm sure they had a few more of them uh, that, that got sifted out, but I mean a, a really, really premium sale up there in Dickinson, North Dakota. You look at this automated market report through Cattle Market Central, you look at your best tested weights. They had 828 head of five weight steers. They averaged 537 with a weighted average price on all of them of 345.66. Wow. Uh, they're still looking for stockers up there. They, they're not uh, April 15th for 90 days necessarily. Uh, they've got uh, different turnout dates and, and longer periods to graze there, guys. 810 head of six weight steers averaged 640 at 311.52. There were 303 head of the eight weight steers in Dickinson, North Dakota. They averaged 840 pounds with a weighted average price. A weighted average price on all of them a tick higher than real-time index at 244.38. Now look at the heifers, and they had a lot more heifers, and they were uh, pretty much all feeder heifers there, guys. 516 head of four-weight heifer calves averaged 463 at 328.19. 840 head of five-weight heifers averaged 558 at 285.28. There were 638 head of six weight heifers. They averaged 642 at 268.70. And 575 head of seven weight heifers in Dickinson, North Dakota. Had a weighted average weight of 742. Weighted average price of 258.55. Give you a few individual quotes that were impressive around. How about Mitchell Livestock Marketing up there? They had a great sale. Uh, but the most impressive was 172 steers weighed 1116 guys feeder steers bring 220 in Mitchell South Dakota Ogallala livestock auction in Ogallala Nebraska had a special sale 72 steers weighed 711 bring three dollars a pound but the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere on Thursday your Macrosin no BS top quote for the day indeed come out of Dickinson North Dakota there it was 102 steers weighed 623 and bring 326.75. And that's your feeder flash for Friday.